Hello, I'm Brandon Phillips. I'm a captain with Puget Sound Fire uh, on Rescue 7. We're located just south of Seattle, Washington. We're a 110 square mile apartment with 14 stations, and we run about 30,000 calls a year. Well, I'm gonna take you through our new uh, Pierce Enforcer heavy duty rescue. Uh, we went with the Enforcer because that's what we're transitioning to throughout the department with our pumpers and our tillers. Uh, so for consistency for fleet, uh, we stuck with the Enforcer with the Cummins X10. Again, um, our fleet manager chose the Cummins X10 to uh, stay consistent for parts and whatnot. So we'll start um, in the cab. Of course, this is a driver's seat. It's a pretty standard uh, layout. We did go with a 24 inch raised roof. Um, we do uh, provide swift water rescue service to zone three which is uh, what we refer to our larger South King County area as. Uh, so we wanted the taller raised roof so our members could uh, put our dry suits and pile garments on inside and uh, not thump our heads on the roof. So that's why we went with that 24 inch raised roof. We have four members assigned to each platoon. We have four platoons. So we went with two forward facing SCBA seats uh, for fire response and gear storage uh, for uh, rescue helmets, fire gear, so on and so forth in here. Uh, the driver's air pack is located here on the floor, which is consistent with the rest of our fleet. Here is a small blister uh, for our driver or our fourth person to be able to get off the rig and grab a pump can. Uh, the two and a half gallon PWCs are the only water that will be carried on this rig. Come to this compartment. This will be a uh, kind of overflow for the driver's gear. Uh, so like I said, swift water gear. We perform or provide rope rescue, trench rescue, confined space, structural collapse, and extrication needs for zone three for the South King County area. So this will be overflow for the driver's uh, equipment. Uh, we have a 10,000 pound removable worn winch here and it will be stored for the driver to install on the front or the back of the rig. We will carry all of our rope rescue equipment, stokes, ropes, rigging, um, spec packs, things like that on these two trays. We've got our spare SCBA bottle storage, um, obviously for our air packs and then airbag needs. Um, these two slots here are for D-sized medical cylinders, um, really for confined space torch operations. That's what the intent of those are for. This, uh, this compartment will be, uh, the bottom will be uh, a lot of cribbing, a six by six and four by four cribbing. We're gonna carry two Honda 2000 suitcase generators. We did not, we opted to not go with the onboard hydraulic generator. Um, so we're gonna store our generators in here. And then uh, again, just kind of any overflow gear that we may, may have. On these two trays here, we'll carry uh, vehicle stabilization equipment from Paratech, their interstate kit. Uh, this is a transverse tray. So that will be the longer struts on this tray. And then this rollout tilt down will be airbags, airbag controllers, and, and the associated equipment with that. We have more SCBA storage. This tray will likely be our RIC compartment, um, which is our rapid intervention crew. In here, we will carry a fast board and our RIC pack uh, strapped together. Uh, it's consistent for our RIC compartment to be on the driver's side in our fleet. You'll also see this is a controller for a, a 200 cubic foot a minute tool air compressor. Uh, not a breathing air compressor. It will be for running uh, pneumatic breakers and rock drills. Uh, we do live in a uh, zone uh, or an area where, where we're earthquake prone, so we will be carrying equipment that will allow us to breach concrete in the event of an earthquake or other large disaster. So that's what that compressor is for. In between our drive axles, we have a 10,000 pound uh, receiver 
which we got four anchors for. We could also run the worn winch sideboard there. And then this is, these are the tool air outlets, uh, our Chicago fittings for our large pneumatic tools and a smaller uh, tool for running pneumatic uh, framing nailers, palm nailers, things like that. Fortunately for this compartment, uh, we built some extra space in. Um, the only thing that we have uh, planned to put in this compartment right now will be uh, battery chargers. We'll eventually put some pack board on this back wall and mount battery chargers for battery operated tools that will be stored in this rear compartment here. On these uh, shelves in this compartment, we'll be carrying an array of uh, toolboxes for man, man and machine incidents, um, grinders, sockets, ratchets, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll also carry four TU32 grip hoists uh, for 8,000 pounds each and uh, another smaller TU28. For, uh, elevator equipment will be carried in here as well, all of our rail blocks and lever hoists and associated rigging will be carried in this compartment. So off the rear, we've got four receivers where we could run in a combination of our winch or we have four of these pinnable anchors so we could run our grip hoists off uh, in a two to one configuration or whichever mechanical advantage system we choose on these so we can uh, anchor our, our rigging off to these. So we've got four of those off the back and then we've got two power outlets for the winch. This rear compartment, We carry a 24 and a 14 foot uh, ladder. We'll carry an attic ladder in here uh, for elevator calls. Uh, we do have two truck companies in our department, two tillers. Um, they will bring the bulk of the, the ladders for us, but um, in the event of a trench rescue, we will use these as uh, ladder bridging and things like that. We will also be utilized as a adjunct to the truck companies in our department and hopefully the zone. In here we'll have a store, or this is storage for uh, heavy lift bars, um, some other elevator equipment, and New York hooks. In this, com this section of the uh, rear body will be ground pads or la for ladder bridging, uh, ultimately back to trench rescue. And then four by four, two by four, two by six storage for uh, building uh, shores, uh, emergency building shores, things like that, or any other lumber needs. This is a 144 inch tray that slides all the way out. We will be carrying our trench shoring equipment in here, which is a Pacific hydraulic shoring. Uh, it's a commercially utilized uh, shoring system. That's what we have opted to go to in our zone. Um, so we will carry our various lengths of trench shoring and some other longer tools, like maybe six foot rubbish hooks and things like that back here in this tray. These two trays will be, uh, or these two molded boxes will be carried in a different compartment and rigging like shackles, Actec anchors, things like that will be carried in them. This area is for six by six cribbing, uh, wedges and uh, pads. This will be this rear area. It also provides a really nice step uh, to take equipment off of those top, top coffin boxes. We do have two 9,000 pound eyes uh, on each corner of the rear body. We would be able to rig a Paratech monopod back to those. So we've got two large uh, full length coffins that run uh, parallel to the frame rail. We divided the driver's side parallel to the frame rail, running the length of the truck for longer uh, four x four lumber, the longer Paratech shores for rakers, uh, things like that. On the officer side, we divided them perpendicular to the frame rail and it will be confined space here, trench or hydraulic trench pumps, um, saba hose, things like that. The less frequently used and bulky equipment will be stored up overhead. And there's a lot of good space up there. We did opt to get a, a 700 pound davit arm that would allow us to lower some of the heavier or bulkier equipment down um, with, a, with a hand winch. And there's two pedestal mounts for those at the front of the upper body.
This rear compartment will be utilized for our vehicle extrication equipment. We're running Hearst hydraulics. Those will be carried in here, sawzalls, uh, pretty much any of, any of that vehicle extrication stuff. The way we spot in our zone per policy is generally at a 45 protecting the scene with the officer side in towards the accident. So this will allow us to pull that equipment off while being protected. So that's what we're gonna be carrying in here. And again, we'll have our batteries mounted on pack boards on that back wall once we get those uh, compartment or the shelf height set. More SCBA storage here. This compartment will be uh, an array of saws uh, from uh, vertical ventilation chainsaws, um, vertical ventilation rotary saws, our forcible entry rotary saw, and then our concrete cutting uh, Husqvarna ring saws and things of that nature will be carried in here, plus the spare blades and whatnot. We've got our, again, in between these tandem drivers, we've got our 10,000 pound removable anchor and then our air tool fittings here. This compartment will namely store our petrogen torches and assort, assorted uh, torch PPE, leathers, welding blankets, things of that nature. Uh, in this section, uh, this is a SCBA bottle and then this space is deep enough to hold a uh, 125 cubic foot industrial oxygen cylinder for our cutting torches for our petrogen systems. So in this compartment, uh, like I said, it's uh, the backside to um, this uh, Paratech equipment and vehicle extrication equipment. We'll carry uh, our rigging chains in here, uh, some grade 100, uh, 3 8 and half inch chains for vehicle uh, rigging stabilization or any rigging needs. This compartment will store a uh, APT 90 pound breaker or jackhammer uh, pneumatically driven and above that will be a uh, super jumbo rivet buster and we will also carry a pneumatic rock drill again as for a large um, earthquake style disaster or some kind of structural collapse where we need to breach concrete. We've opted to go with those uh, industrial uh, pneumatics. This compartment or this specific tray will carry our assortment of Paratech hydrofusions, uh, some 10s and 16s, and then into that vehicle uh, or the interstate kit, um, the different long shores, the golds, uh, Acme thread struts, so on and so forth. Um, overflow to that, the longer 610s will be up here, high lift jacks, things of that nature. And then just some extra storage over here, another half depth roll out tilt down tray. Again, so we're looking at the back side of our rope rigging compartment. It's transverse, slides out both ways. Uh, Stokes ropes rigging kits. This will be uh, overflow for the officer uh, for my bunking gear and whatever rope or, or rescue gear I have with me. We do have a large Xantrex uh, inverter, and that's the control for this. This compartment will be for me and my hand tools when I arrive at a fire. Uh, I've got my battle lantern. We will carry a six foot New York hook or two in here, a set of irons, and I'll probably hang my bunker coat in here just to keep it off my doghouse. So our third person's area, SCBA seats, storage for there, rope harness, rescue gear. And this is my officer seat, a pretty standard layout. We'll eventually add a MDC terminal SCBA seat. Um, like I said, we are 
an asset for the entire zone of, of zone three south king county we run automatic mutual aid and in theory we could run into the city of seattle or zone one which is the east side king county area we could run there on automatic mutual aid um, so we opted to go with air packs and the seeds because since we are a regional asset we want to we want to show up ready to work so we opted to go with uh, air pack seats and I'll also have a tick stored up here thermal imaging camera for my use. So this is a very long rig and we do operate in an urban environment so we tried to shorten up that wheelbase as much as possible um, so that's why we opted to do it, go with this short bumper. We recessed the growler because uh, we are going to be rigging off the front of this rig hopefully not banging up as much and again try to make that wheelbase as short as possible. This is a very long rig. Um, we've got our three 10,000 pound Pinnable anchors, we're going to run our winch on those. And ultimately, um, those, those movable anchors I showed on the rear could come up here. We could run our grip hoist off the front with the rope coming back to these 10,000 pound Chicago eyes. So we, ultimately, we can run two to ones with uh, 20,000 pounds of anchors off the front on each side for vehicle stabilization and override, overturning. So we went with a consistent uh, lighting package. It was generally dictated by our fleet manager. Uh, again, just for consistency, we went with Whalen, uh, 12 volt lighting. Again, we didn't put an onboard generator on this. So this is all uh, 12 volt LED, very bright. We've been very happy with it. We're currently riding on a P Pierce Enforcer pumper um, as a, our cross staff unit. And we have a very similar lighting package we're very happy with. So we just stuck with it for consistency. I'd like to thank uh, Hughes Fire Equipment and Dan Hayes, our rep, uh, for help building this rig. We're very excited to have it. This is the first uh, heavy duty rescue that will be in service in South King County. Um, it's the second staffed heavy rescue in the state of Washington. So we're very excited to have this opportunity and provide this service to uh, our citizens and the rest of the zone. Thank you.